Hi guys, it's your girl Lola Loves You and today's topic we're going to talk about Whitney Houston and Luther Vandross friendship journey. Well, it all started. Luther Vandross, as a young guy, he loved Dion Ward. That was his diva. He loved Dion Ward and he also liked the Sweet Inspirations, Whitney Houston's mom group. And he, uh, kept going all around town saying he was Dion Ward's cousin. That was his cousin. And he it went around town so bad that it got to Dion Ward. And Dion Ward was like, I don't have no cousin named Luther Vandross. And they kept saying, yeah, that's your cousin, your cousin. So I don't know at an event or some type of show, someone say, oh, your cousin's here. And she said, oh, really? My cousin Luther is here, huh? And I guess... <laughs> She found out that he really loved her and, you know, and she was a role model to him in the music business, in the music world. And I believe that, you know, that's how their friendship came about. And then, you know, Sissy, you know, Sissy Houston and Whitney Houston came about by Dion Ward introducing Luther Vandross to the, you know, the Houston's family. I believe they hit it off right away. I believe that, uh, you don't understand when people, especially back then, when people have a passion for music, it's just like a bond. You know, it's a common bond for true artists. Like they come, they have a common bond. And back then, Luther Vandross was producing music as well. So I believe that that's how he got a working relationship with Dion. And then he got a working relationship with Sissy because Sissy was recording her first solo album, Think It Over. On the Think It Over album, Whitney Houston, accompanied by Luther Vandross, are doing all the background vocals. If you get that Think It Over album, I have it. Oh my gosh, it's classic Whitney Houston in the background with her and Luther Vandross. And it's just powerful to hear both of those two, you know, back doing the backup for Sissy Houston. Now, this time in both of their lives, they were both beginning show business, Whitney Houston doing backup work, Luther Vandross doing backup work and producing and getting ready for his solo career. Now, both of them were, you know, really not in the limelight. I think both of them were relaxed in front of each other. So I believe both of them, you know, in my opinion, allegedly, both of them are from the LGBT community. So I feel as though they knew one another was each other brother and sister. Like, you know what I'm saying? Somebody in the LGBT community said, oh, that's my brother or that's my sister. Because both of y'all have the common ground of the LGBT community family. So I believe Whitney Houston, numerous occasions, always said Luther Vandross, my brother, my brother. Yes, because because they grew up together and, you know, doing background work and sessions. But also, I believe also, you know, it goes beyond that. And I believe that they kind of shed a common bond with them being closeted, um, allegedly homosexuals. And I believe that, um, you know, that's a more strong bond. That's a stronger bond. And I've, you never saw Luther say anything bad about Whitney and vice versa. You never saw Whitney say anything bad about them. And every time they saw each other, it was like genuine love. So, in my opinion, I think that's another common bond that they shared was them being both closeted homosexuals, allegedly. Luther had to put on a straight persona and Whitney Houston had to put on a straight persona. And both of their careers took off in great ways and they could not be their true selves to the public. So, a lot of times when people are, especially back then, closeted, they become more self-destructive and have self-destructive behavior. Now, Luther's, his wasn't as deep as Whitney's. His addiction was to food, you know, with his weight going up and down and him always being insecure about his weight. Whitney Houston's was, her addiction was drugs. And her insecurities was people finding out that if she was gay or not, allegedly. So both of them, you know, it's, it's a parallel. When you're closeted and you have insecurities about yourself and people tell you, oh, you shouldn't do that. Don't let people know that. You always going to carry them insecurities and those insecurities put you pathway to addictions. You understand what I'm saying? You Addiction. So you're, you're hiding in your addiction. You're hiding your pain in your addiction. And I believe 
Luther hid his pain with food and Whitney hid her pain with drugs. Now Clive Davis adored these two. He loved Luther Vandross and he loved Whitney Houston. And both of those two are musical geniuses. You understand what I'm saying? Whitney Houston is a musical genius and Luther Vandross was a musical genius. Luther also before his um, him being uh, a solo artist, he really was a great producer. You know, he produced a lot of songs for Aretha Franklin, um, Dionne Ward. Now, with Whitney Houston, her music started getting backlash from the African American community. So, in her third album, she brought in Luther Vandross to make her a song. And he created a song, um, Who Do You Love? And you can tell that it has a touch of Luther to it. But in my opinion, it's a little churchy. I don't know. If it's one of those instruments. I think it's the piano. It's a little churchy. I wish it was a little more R&B or a little more pop. It has a great song. And you can hear Luther Vandross in the background. Because it sounds like his background singers and him is on the background of that song. So she tried to, you know, bring him in to give her more urban sound. But I don't think, I think it just wasn't executed in the correct way. I know Luther Vandross could have gave Whitney Houston a beautiful R&B ballad. So I, I wish, you know, that the song would have been better. I like the song, Who Do You Love? But I think it could have, he could have gave her something better. I remember on one of Luther Vandross documentary that, um, Whitney Houston was talking and she said how Luther Vandross was always worried about his weight and she would say how he would always compare himself to other men like slender you know built men and she would tell him Luther long as you healthy it doesn't matter you can sing they can't sing you can sing and Lou and Whitney was such a great friend to him and always gave him great advice and it's so weird people that don't People that give great advice, they usually don't follow their own advice. And it's so weird that how loving and compassionate Whitney Houston could give anybody great advice. She never took the advice for herself. And that's so crazy. But it just shows you it don't matter how talented, how beautiful, how handsome anyone is. Insecurities are insecurities. And if you don't live your truth and you don't live out loud in a decent manner... You'll be miserable. You could be rich, beautiful, handsome, and rich and still miserable and still have self-destructive behavior. Well, self-destructive behavior due to health problems, due to him, you know, losing weight and gaining weight, Luther Vandross' health declined after having strokes. And after he had a series of strokes, um, he passed. And they did a dedication video um, to the song Dance With My Father Again. And they show a picture of Whitney Houston, her father, and a picture of Whitney Houston with Luther Vandross backstage at one of her concerts. It's so sad that he died at a young age, such as Whitney Houston that died at a young age as well. It's so sad when you have true artists that really put love into their work and they're no longer here. But the blessing in that the love in their work is that we get to relive those songs over and over every time we listen to the songs every time we play the songs we can remember what we was doing how we felt what type of mood we was in or we could play those songs to get us in a happier mood or to get us out of sad mood or you know heartache or heartbreak or whatever the case may be Booth Evangelist will always be an iconic singer i mean his talent it was so iconic it didn't matter if he was gay straight or whatever he was a true talent at his funeral dion warry spoke and sissy houston performed a couple of gospel songs along with aretha franklin in the front row with sissy houston and a, a lot of other celebrities were there at his funeral to you know say so long to luther I'm glad he got to share his talent and music with the world. I know him and Whitney Houston, Lord's Woman, are in heaven, having a time of their life, having a time of their eternal life, <laughs> serenading Jesus and thanking Jesus and praising Jesus. Well, it's your girl, Lola Loves You. That's the friendship journey of Whitney Houston and Luther Vandross. I'll be back with many more videos. I love my honey bunnies. Bye.